Good morning or good evening to those of you that are able to see this video over the holiday period. First of all, we wish you a very happy holidays from Elmsford. Uh, we are, you know, we're gearing up for, for January beginning uh, probably during the summers when our planning really begins and, and goes. And so we're really at the point of super energy filled uh, you know, departments all over here getting ready for the shows, getting uh, these introductions out, getting the catalogs done, and um, it, it's been lots of fun. There's lots for you guys to get excited about, and with Tozai especially, um, we did something unique this year, and we were able to, A, get the collection out to, to a few people to test it in the market and get the sales through, and what that did was that enabled us to get some early vibes on uh, saleability in terms of how many customers we anticipated would, would be interested in each product. So ultimately, net net at the end, we, we should be in a better inventory situation uh, for the Tozai for January um, in terms of uh, things not waiting till April on reorders. I mean, you know, look, a hot item is a hot item. It may it may still happen where uh, you know we have some challenges on supplying. You know, second orders or second tier or in February reorders and things like that. But I think in general you're going to be really happy with the response time. As you have been this fall on inventory with Tozai, where lots of things are in stock. I actually went to a customer a couple weeks ago and we wrote a ton of stuff that was in stock immediately that we shipped within five days, except they had a little credit issue. I had to uh, go into uh, as a banker and walk out with my suitcase full of, full of cash. Um, uh, but you know, we had a lots in stock. So I think going into January with Tozai, we have some great product, we have a beautiful supplement, uh, some interesting new things, all based on current successes and trends in the market, as we always do. So why don't we jump into the product line right now. And uh, I'm just gonna go, I think, in the order, uh, the order of the book, which I have right here, some of the different pages from it, and I'll talk about different products and some of the attributes. One of the most important things of why we do this video, if I can give you some history, I'm going to give that to you, but, it, but also seeing the size. For those of you that aren't able to go to the shows uh, in January, uh, by looking at this video, you'll really understand the size of a product. So I'm going to first talk about our horse, our Tang horse. Uh, this is uh, actually, this is made uh, to look like we just pulled it out of the earth or, uh, or it looks like it would do in a museum. And so you're going to see all different nuances of the glazing and see, I'm hoping you can get in here. Look at this is matte, this is shiny, it's crackled. Look at the drips of glaze on the bottom. That makes it look authentic and that's something that's a selling point. You can see the dirt and the, and the, and the schmutz inside. Um, look at the bottom, uh, you have some Chinese characters which indicate the... Uh, the artist that put, that put this together. And so you just have a piece that looks like it was an antique, like a found object that you can now, uh, you know, um, uh, sell to your customers. Uh, you know, when I think about a replica of a museum piece, and you see this in every Asian uh, museum, something from the Tang Dynasty, um, then you think about museums as being a great opportunity in a customer base. So that's something you should go, you know we have so many different colors on this, but here we're adding uh, this blue one. We did very well with our, uh, with our Terre uh, Melee. I'm going out of order here, but staying within the blue family, I'm sorry. Um, but this is that marbleized finish that was done, uh, originated in France, okay, in a small town in the, in the south of France. And uh, you can see that each piece is going to be different. This is not a, uh, this is meant, this just happens uh, with the type of glaze that we're using here. And so we picked um, the best items to do in blue. I think in the beige we did a few more skews and we did, I think we narrowed out uh, the plate, the big plate that was done in that. That didn't do as well. So we said, okay, so let's just pick the best of the best and be sure that we're providing the successes for you, uh, for the customer. So, this is one of those stories that you don't have to edit. We've, we've done the editing for you and the customer. So what you see is not because we have it left. We've already edited out the plate, which for our customers didn't do as well. We loved it. It has a great functionality, but it didn't do as well. So here we have a bowl, okay? And you see it's so beautiful all around, even the bottom. 
I love the way the glaze just is all around, all on all sides. You can see this filled with fruit or an orchid plant or just arranged beautifully. And blue is, it is obviously a, a great color uh, you know, palette to go with. And so here we have a set of two planters. This is the larger of the two. It holds a, a six or eight inch pot right in there. And then we have the smaller of the two here. So this is a great uh, collection. Up front here, we have some new uh, picture frames, um, and so this is a, a all in gradations of blue. Now, the um, when you look at these frames, first of all, uh, bone bone doesn't come naturally blue. We have to dye it, and bone is has different densities. You know, when in your older or my wife has some bone density issues at, at her stage in life um, and so bone density will also talk it talks about the ability to absorb the dye and so um, I can't tell you if this is a healthier situation than this but the concept of bone density is brought to life here when you see how the dye is absorbed by the bones so we first we cut all the pieces we, we dye them and then we fit them into a frame like a mosaic, like the Italian, uh, Italians have done for centuries, or the Romans uh, for, for that matter. Uh, the, the border is lined as well. The edge has it. That's what Tozai does, attention to detail all, around the, all throughout the experience. This is a frame that will stand horizontally or vertically. And I love that we're doing these assortments. You guys and the customers have all responded really well to, to it when we do assortments. This is such a, a great grouping. I could see it next to a bedroom because so many beddings are done to even have a consumer who's interested in buying three of these. And so here we have, these are all four by sixes. In front of that we have some boxes here, uh, all done again with the same art, artistry that's shown on the bone. You know, if it didn't have some of these, let's say, coloring differences, um, it wouldn't be real, okay? And that's the difference between when you use resin and when you use bone, although some resin really is amazing. Okay, these all come with that silica gel which keeps it a little drier inside and, and keeps it from, uh, keeps it, uh, you know, from, from warping. Um, and that's an MDF uh, painted material inside. And there are three different boxes. The bottoms of them are all with the MDF showing right there. Um, then we're going to go, okay, to our studded mirror on the floor there, Z, if you would. Okay, so this is using uh, the crop material. Okay, this is the faux, uh, the faux leather material. It's a great mirror piece. Studs are used throughout. You see a lot of um, sofas and chairs being accented with studs with all different materials from leather to, uh, to wool on fabrics, on furniture. And so this accent is really uh, important. Uh, and the color again, the blue, so you see the profile of this. It's beautifully done. If you get in here, you'll see the detail. All the workmanship is, is wonderful. And then on the back, um, it's just very, it's simply covered with a, uh, with a velvet material. And this may be our work to hang it uh, for a photo shoot. So, but it comes, I think it, it comes with these uh, hangers here. You can use nails or as we did, we just bought one of the, you know, the wire. So here you have a really good size. This is probably around 30 inches in uh, diameter or length and height uh, and a great looking mirror. And so this is a, a similar mirror to what we've had before, a similar design that sold very well. And we just did it you know, in the blue color. Um, Okay, next we're going to go to, uh, I'm not going to talk about the repeat items, um, but I will just talk about the philosophy behind them. We think that it's helpful uh, when we repeat something in, uh, in the book, it's to highlight and help you remember that there, there are opportunities. It really reinforces the concept that, that you guys should go to the book when you're done with the supplement or go to the book first. And then go to the supplement, however way you want to do the sale. Um, so here again, we've taken the successes uh, that we've done so well with, and we've taken this lacquerware. Um, this is, I think it's the, is it bamboo. I forgot the material underneath it. Let's just see. Um, oh, this is uh, mother of pearl and ceramic. Okay, 
It did, it did sound like, uh, and it has a nice weight to it. So can you guys hear that? Uh, that sounds like ceramic. So what they've done, okay, is we have a, a very simple ceramic. This is not a fancy ceramic material. It's a low fire. And then we've mosaiced and, and glued on top these MOP pieces, shell, MOP shell that's cut into small pieces, and then we dye it again in this midnight blue coloring. Okay, and then it's a lacquer. Now the Vietnamese are known for their lacquerware. That's really the key here, is that their ability to do the lacquer and the mosaic. So here they've come in here. Again, we've done our variety of, of items. We've done the vases. Um, we've done a set of two. Uh, can we just, we want to come back to this? Okay.